Once we've made sure we're solving a real problem for a category of people we really understand, we can start thinking about a solution. That means a product made of features. Most of the time, the solution ideas will come from the insights you get during the interviews you made. So don't forget to write them down as you do the interviews. I'm sure you already have plenty of feature ideas. You were probably thinking about them even before validating your problem. While this is not really a good thing, don't beat yourself up. It's what everyone does because it's what gets us excited, envisioning a product that millions will use, right? The best way to deal with this is to write down all your ideas and to keep thinking. Do not throw yourself completely at the first ideas you'll get. You will probably miss the real gems that can come out of your brain. So focus on quantity, try to be as exhaustive as possible, withhold criticism, be unselfconscious, and don't hesitate to write down anything that comes to your mind. Let me give you a few tips to get creative when looking for a solution and feature ideas. A good way to start this exploration is to take the main terms of your problem and to do a semantic exploration of each of them. These are our two problems, and these are the main terms. Here's what I usually do next. I take a piece of paper, I draw a stone, more or less like this, with at least 10 branches, and I write down one of the terms inside the sun. And I force myself to write at least one word for each branch. Sometimes it comes easily, and you find yourself adding branches or sub-branches. Sometimes you have to force yourself to think. These words can be noun, verbs, adjectives, whatever you like. You can think about the word in the current context and out of the context, so you can broaden your apprehension of the subject. Let's try with photo. Pause the video and write down 10 words related to the word photo. Pause it now. So these are my words. They will surely be different from yours, but that's okay. Do the same thing for the other terms and put them in a table like this. This semantic exploration is meant to help you broaden your horizon. The outcome, the words themselves, are not what's more interesting about this step. It's the process itself, because new ideas will spring along the way. So let's go on. Another good technique is to look at other digital or physical products that solve a similar problem. For instance, what do we usually do to showcase a printed picture? We put a nice frame around it. Maybe we could put digital frames around the pictures taken with our phones. Next tip is to look at common human behaviors when trying to solve a similar problem. What do people do when they want to look better? That's right, they put on nice clothes. And can photos wear clothes? No, not really, but maybe we can cover them with something. Also, think about what your target is already using. If we check our persona, we can see that Kevin, our target user, owns a camera. Photographers sometimes change lenses. Maybe we can find um, a way to add lenses to smartphones, hardware or software. Another great technique is to think about the key issues that affect the problem. Let's think about the other part of a problem for a minute. Sharing pictures from your phone is complicated. Why? Because photos take time to upload and even more time if you have to go to every app you want to share your picture on. So it would be great to have a single place where you can select the networks you want to share the photo on. What you can also do is pretend you're trying to solve the opposite problem. How would you do it? If you wanted to make picture look even less good, we could pixelate them. So maybe there's a way to sharpen the pictures we take with our phones. Trying to solve a similar problem in a different field can also be very interesting. For instance, what do we do when videos don't look good? Well, the first problem is usually that the video is shaky and this can be solved by using a digital stabilizer or a tripod. Photos are sometimes blurry as well. Maybe a stabilizer would make sense. This is a very similar field, but you could choose a totally different field. It can also be interesting to brainstorm with monetization in mind. What would you sell that solve your problem? Did you know that Instagram's first business model idea was to sell filters? And that's actually what Path do. So, don't worry about repeating yourself. Keep writing. And don't hesitate to take a few breaks to empty your brain. If you use these techniques, you should come up with a lot of solutions or feature ideas to solve the problems you've identified. Your job now 
and it might not be easy, will be to prioritize these ideas. So, to do that, ask yourself two questions. Among these ideas, which ones would be the most efficient to solve the problem, and which ones are the most feasible? Take a minute to look at this very interesting quote from the creator of Gmail and Google AdSense. It says, pick three key attributes or features, get those things very, very right, and then forget about everything else. By focusing on only a few core features in the first version, you are forced to find the true essence and value of the product. And among these key features, you must pick one. This will be your one feature, your key feature. This doesn't prevent you from having other secondary features to make this one feature work, but your one feature will be what all your app will be focused and oriented towards. So how can you choose this top feature, this one feature? I think by now you know the answer. Go talk to people and pitch them your ideas. I won't be repeating it each time, and it might not be necessary for each single step of the workflow. But as I said, design is an iterative process and the iteration cycle always involves user validation. So what you did with the problem, you should do the same to validate your solution idea. Same thing for your mockups and your first designs, don't be afraid to show them to people. The feedback you'll get will be amazingly valuable, even if it's not good feedback. Actually, especially when it's not good feedback. Don't just take my word for it, give it a try. Once you're clear what your key feature is, only keep the sub-features that you might have come up with that are related and needed to make that one feature app work. Draw a simple table like this to have a clear view of what you'll be building. Applying filters to photos to make them look good will be our one feature. It's very simple. You don't need to learn how to use any tools like you would with a photo enhancing software and it's potentially quite effective. Making photos beautiful is useless unless people actually see them. That's why our two sub-features will be to let people share them easily on social networks, but also to give the user a feed of his pictures that other people can see. This last choice is comforted by what some people told us when researching the problem and refining our persona. So we'll have filters, feed and share. And one last piece of advice. Don't get emotionally attached to a feature. This happens a lot and can cause you to waste a lot of time. Commit yourself to satisfy your user needs, not to specific features.